can I transform a regular rental property into a high demand luxury getaway? In today's episode, we'll explore short-term and mid-term rental design with expert Amy Powers. Hello, hello, my name is Dr. Rachel Gainsborough and I am obsessed with all things short-term rentals, revenue streams, and helping you navigate your career, real estate, and your busiest and most wonderful seasons of life. So grab your coffee, get comfortable as you get ready to learn and grow with me. This is the Luxury Rental Doctor Podcast. Thank you. We're going to talk about Beyond Furniture and how to devour your competition. So we're going to have, think of the Zen mindset, the game changers, cover ups that pop, the beast within, baby you've got this, and chomp chomp. These are the fun little titles I came up with. So let's get into it. So let me introduce myself a little bit. I started a company several years ago. I actually started doing this. I was staging for 15 years. And in 2018, the Super Bowl was coming to Atlanta and I had some investment properties. Investors were my target clients at the time. And they said, can we turn some of the staged houses into a short term rental for the Super Bowl? Like they were gonna charge $3,000 a night and da 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 and so forth. And I said, well, I didn't know a lot about short-term rental, but I did know that I didn't want anyone falling off my beds or getting hurt. So I said, let me go check. Staging furniture is a little different than what you would put in a short-term rental, ideally. I did use real mattresses and beds, so that was in my favor. But I just checked everything, made sure everything was in good condition and so forth so that I was protected, also that my client was protected. And that started my journey into the short-term rental market. And through that investment relationship, the investor relationships I had, which was through the Real Estate Investors Association, if you're familiar with that, I, I was connected to Rachel. And then Rachel had me come do her property for her Netflix special. And it was downhill from there for me. It was full steam ahead. And so, as you heard yesterday, I recently had my name of my company, Vacation Rental in a Box, because everything comes in boxes, a lot of boxes, is now an official registered trademark. Yay. Thank you. And I have been working with investors and sellers and hosts for a, a minute. And this year I wrote the first CE class in the United States for realtors to take. It's a four hour CE class on how to work with buyers like yourself who want to be in the short term rental market. A lot of the information I got to do that course, I learned from Ryan Bakke. He sent me his information over. I, I met with some mortgage brokers that specialize in short term rentals. So this network group here fed into the success of me being able to complete that um, accomplishment for that first CE class in the United States. And it's for Georgia because I'm from Georgia. And I also authored a book. It's on Amazon, Eco-Friendly Design, Sustainable Practice for Environmentally Conscious Short-Term Rentals. I know that's a long name, but I thought it said exactly what it needed to say, right? And I'm working on one with a friend of mine who is a senior adult on aging in place and universal design for short-term rentals as well. So that will be the next book in my series of books. I forgot what the name of the series is called. I forgot what I named it, but anyway. <laughs> this year and several years I've received since 2017 the most, one of the top 100 most influential people in real estate staging. I am the president of our International Home Staging, staging Association called IHOSP and I'm very excited to be a part of that. And I do have two of my own short-term rentals. And one's in Park City, Utah, and one's in Tucson, Arizona. And Jen talked a lot about her family, so I like, okay, I'll have to say something about my family now. <laughs> I've been married for 26 years, and it, you know, husband, wife years, that's like a lot. <laughs> 
I have three kids, 24, 21, and 14. So, and three dogs and a cat. So that's important part to say. And we do live in Metro Atlanta. If you're familiar with Atlanta, we live in the town of Woodstock, Georgia. So let's talk about the Zen mindset. So for me, the Zen mindset with short-term rental and mid-term rental is to remember you're in the hospitality industry. You're not in the real estate industry. You're in, a, you're in the lodging, the experience side of, of the hospitality industry. Short-term rental guests are typically vacationers and they're looking for something special. They may even be looking for something nicer, more luxurious than what they're used to because that's a break away from the norm. And that's what a vacation is, correct? When it comes to short-term rental design, I believe the aesthetic is very important. What is the vibe? What is the emotions? What is that connection? What are you trying to communicate through the photographs that you are using as your marketing tools, right? In short-term rental design, you have the flexibility to change your design. And one of my favorite things is if the outside is changing, the inside should be changing. So seasonal changes are important. Does not mean you have to be drastic. It could be changing your throw pillows and throw blankets, right? So it doesn't have to be drastic, but it should be some kind of symbolic change so that if it keeps your listing fresh, right? And you want those people, you want to establish guests who are repeat guests. So that allows them to experience something new in your property as well. So details are important. We'll talk more about that later. And there's a higher chance of parties and all, you know, the little, the little things that can happen in a short-term rental versus a mid-term rental. So let's talk about the mid-term rental. The mid-term rental can attract guests who want the essential amenities for quality of life, right? They may be staying there for a various reasons, temporary housing. It could be they are looking for a new house. They could be students who are there for a semester or two semesters, right? It's perfect. Metro Merle is perfect for students. Freelancers and traveling workers, people who might be going through a divorce looking for their own place, may not have furnishings, so that's an ideal opportunity for them. And we also have that insurance guest, and I know we focus a lot on that. And that insurance guest is really important to, to consider and think about who is your ideal avatar? Why are they there? If it's an insurance, could they have gone through something traumatic? How can you be a part of that healing process? You're not just becoming an accommodation, you're becoming a sanctuary. So having that Zen mindset of, of imagining who your ideal guest is and how you can speak to the heart of that, that will make your listing so attractive right? That energy, that feel. And how can we meet those needs, right? How can we meet that, that opportunity? So let's get to game changing results. Start focusing on game changing thoughts. So game changers, what do you think we're going to talk about with that? Games. <laughs> Games. Oh my goodness. You got me. <laughs> Games make people feel good. Have you ever, unless you're a bad loser, have you ever played a game and it was like, oh man, that was the worst thing I've ever done? I'll flip the table. <laughs> Let, Adrian has to win. <laughs> they can be brainless fun or they can be something that is strategic, right? I love strategy games. That's, one, that's my favorite. They're part of the experience. I've heard it's not what you say or do, but how you make people feel that is what they remember. So remember, that's an experience. It's an opportunity to, to evoke some of that emotion, that feeling from your property. Types of games, you know, board and dice. You have table games, video games, puzzles are a type of game, courts, and a court is like a tennis court, basketball court, and then there's yard games, like putt-putts and things like that. So you have to think about your space, your interior, your exterior spaces. Is there opportunity? If you have nothing in your backyard, Annette, <laughs> is it an opportunity 
to create an experience, right? So think again, who is your guest avatar, right? Is it a family, family games, games for children? Is it a, a couple's retreat or a girl's weekend? Have kind of fun, crazy games. Think about that. What maintenance is involved? If you have outdoor games, bigger games, is there some maintenance involved? Is there some risk management involved? Is there liabilities, right? Could someone get hurt if it's not properly installed or maintained? Thinking about those things. And where can we get some good games? Host GPO has some amazing games. They have a vendor called Yard Games, Mark and Graham. And Yard Games, obviously, is what it says. They're games for your yard. <laughs> and they're oversized games. Like, you can get oversized Jenga and oversized Connect Four, you know, and, and things like that. So those are fun things to add, especially if you're in an area where the climate allows for you to have things a little bit more outside. And even if it's a, a cl climate where you have seasonal opportunities, you can bring them in and store them during the months that might be cold and snowy and things like that. So you can still take advantage of that. Amazon, I love this set right here. I, I've started putting these in my properties. They look like books. They're very kind of vintagey look, but they're more classic traditional games anyway in the middle section. And I get this on Amazon and it's, you know, Scrabble, Sorry, Clue. So they have games for two people. They have family friendly games and then your Monopoly and, and, and Mystery Date. That's a fun one for a girls weekend kind of thing as well. So knowing who your avatar is. Is that a whole set? Really? That is a whole set. Mm, that's good. You can get the whole set. Yeah. If you go to Amazon, WS Game Company is, is the vendor and you should be able to pull it up straight away. And I, that's not a cheap set, but it's a good set. <laughs> I usually get the three set. And that's like 120. I, they're usually about 30 to $40 a, a pop. Local stores, especially this time of year, you have a lot of things are on sale because of the holidays. You can go to Target and Walmart and get some games for like $5 right now. Home Goods has, and TJ Maxx Marshalls, they will have some cool games. Sometimes they'll have games in fun, more traditional games in fun packaging. So it's not as as typical as you would have. Brookstone has some really nice games. They also have the, the massage chairs and all that. So that, that sort of, and then there's specialty game stores that you go to. If you have a demographic that would do video games, you could go to GameStop, things like that, or, or places you can go, you can putt putt, indoor or outdoor. You can have little things like this. So most popular games, these are things for you to consider if you have an opportunity to invest in this and you have the space, right? Table games, obviously pool, billiards is very popular. Foosball is very popular and I play a mean game of foosball. So I challenge you to foosball. <laughs> Air hockey is a fun game. Shuffleboard and downstairs there's a ping pong table and I love that table because the net's wood. I don't know if you, the net is wood, not a net, yeah. <laughs> is wood. And I thought that was very classy. Card and board games, you have your traditional cards, right? You can couple that with dominoes or poker chips and things like that. Uno, Face 10, those are some of my favorites. Cards Against Humanity, that's not for children. Just so you know, <laughs> that's an adult. That is an adult only game. Monopoly is like anyone can play it if they know how to count and, and whatnot. And it's, it's a little strategy game too. Scrabble is a fun game. You know, all these games, you're probably familiar with those. So these are some card and board games that are very popular. And exterior games, Oversized Connect Four and Jenga. The Cornhole is a super popular. And you can even get Cornhole games with your branding whatever your name of your residence is called, like beach houses usually have a name, mountain houses have a name, and you may have a name for your listing because you might have multiple, and that's the way you can distinguish them. You can brand your cornhole games. Badminton's a fun little game. It's smaller than a tennis court. It, it can be taken up and down fairly easy. Bocce ball, where are the little balls at? 
horseshoes is fun. The outdoor putt-putt area, especially if you have poolside and you have little areas you can do fun little things, that's a, a fun way to do it. And then outdoor bowling is another option as well. So cover-ups that pop. We're gonna talk about wall coverings. Yay! Yay. That make an impact. MTR versus STR. I think a lot of STRs will have a lot of fun little vibrant things, but this is an MTR and we did this really nice wallpaper as the backdrop to not a theater room, but like a room where we could watch TV more, a more relaxed space for TV. And it's very beautiful, it's elegant. My team put it up. It wasn't that difficult, although they don't like to do it, but they will do it. <laughs> I, like to, I like them to do it. They do a good job. And just add some character too. You know, could you imagine if that was just the gray wall at the end of the, it, it, would, it changes the dynamics of that room, right? And that's just, and it's not super expensive to do an accent wall like that. So you wanna, this is a painted mural right here, you see? I, I designed it. This is in the Poconos for Karen Joseph. Rachel. <laughs> this is a mural. And I, I made it to complement the rug. And I also, the Schmeg refrigerator came with the house. And so I was like, we have to make that color a part of it. So there is that color in there as well. And so your murals need to complement where you are, what could be happening like around like activities in the area, things like that. It's Poconos, obviously we're mountains, right? It, it should enhance the decor, right? That's important. And it can add value, right? Because it's unique. Murals can attract people, right? And it doesn't, it's not super expensive. And you're helping the local economy when you engage in a muralist that's in the area. And, it, and it's a wonderful opportunity to be creative as well. Wallpaper. This is a house I did in Monrovia, Indiana, which is a suburb of Indianapolis. This is a huge, massive house at the pool. The indoor pool was over half the house. And you see where that arrow is, is where this room is. So it had glass doors, although we had rolling curtains coming across of it, so it had privacy. But we wanted, it was so brown. So I added orange and white and uh, some greenery in, in the corners and things like that. So I brought some of that into the room some of that organic elements to kind of hone, tone down some of that wood as well. So it, it complemented, again, enhanced what was going on in the area. Vinyl murals. This is a property in Mears, Michigan that I did in, in the spring, I think. And it, this is a, a shot of the house and you see all the sand dunes. And it's right off of Michigan. From the front of the house, you can see Lake Michigan. So, we wanted to create that experience, right? This complements that experience. So you want to make sure it makes sense. You don't want just a random mural in a house and like, I don't get it. Where do you find the light? I, Etsy is where I get a lot of mine. Wallpaper, Wafer, there's um, vendors on HostGPO that does wallpaper. And local, you can do local sourced wallpaper and then Etsy is a great source for a lot of these things as well. This is an example of a mural that has a backlight. And this property was in, it, it's, it was an arbitrage situation where it was in a very wooded, the back of, it was apartment or townhomes, and the area was wooded. It was really nicely wooded, and they wanted to have a, a, a woodland theme in the property. And so we put this backdrop, and there were the backlighting, and it, took a ordinary blank wall and zhuzhed it up a little bit and created some elegance and, and some interest, right? And this property, I would say, who do you think the ideal avatar would be for this type of property? It's a two bedroom, good question. That's a great question for this. I would say a younger person or couple or family, right? Because that kind of mural with a backlight is going to maybe attract more of that type of demographic. And so you can even see the furniture was a little bit more hip, a little bit more trendy, right? So 
Your design should speak to an ideal audience as well. Very important. This is the house that you saw with the big pool. This is the little keeping space off the kitchen. I personally tiled it and it was a peel and stick tile. So I didn't have to grout anything. It was magic. Where there was some unintentional flaws, we have a nice basket over them. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it made sense the baskets were going to go there anyway it was part of the the aesthetic but now they're just nice little cover up but there was only one little area that i covered up i did not do that but i designed it we had a professional tile because that is a grout that's in a bathroom and you want to make sure that's sealed properly because of moisture and things like that so that was professionally done by a tiler that's true, true tile right there. Yes, and you could go to floor and decor and pick out and spend all day there, or you can call me and I'll help narrow it down. No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this, this is a vinyl cut mural that it's like a Banksy theme. It was in a very artsy part of Dallas those fingers, those are literally vinyl lines and the paint is the backdrop. So the fun thing here too is you can paint, get a vinyl, not super expensive. I had it so the size was it basically where the sofa is. It's just a couple inches lower than that. So it's not all the way down and, it, and it's perfect. Over here you can see, so these were tiny units. This one was very tiny. You can see another little vinyl cutout on the wall. That one will not be something you want to do with someone you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> my current operate, my operations director, we did these like till three o'clock in the morning and all those little lines are literally lines that we learned how not to do it and what and how to do it right <laughs> that night. But it was fun and they turned out great. And by the way, these are sleeper sofas and they are so comfortable. They're like futani type sleeper sofas and they add some vibrancy. I call this my banana house. <laughs> and that's like my Scandinavian fun house. So you can paint with architectural details. And if you have a good contractor, these are just, just wood yeah. cut and they can easily do that. And then you paint it and it just gives a little wow factor, right? It turns an ordinary wall into something very elegant. And I made this bed very casual and like flowy and I wanted to feel a little sexy. I felt that that was pulled off. This was all Scandinavian-esque as well with the organic headboard and it's not competing the way you do it, right? You want to keep it elegant. Oh, do you notice that I throw my throw blankets? <laughs> One of the things that cleaners like to do is lay them across so neatly, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it disturbs me. <laughs> 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 I literally like, it's a throw blanket, you throw it. <laughs> so I thank you for noticing that. That's Especially a, the one in the organic. I yeah. feel like it adds a better touch. Yes. It's a casual, right? You want people to feel like livable luxe. That's, that's what livable luxe is to me. It's so approachable, but it's elevated. And that is just a subtle way. It's a psychological way for me to add that approachability. And it doesn't look bad, right? There are some ho houses where I, if I have a full size quilt or comforter that I would lay over, but a little bit more up and toward the middle where that is a higher end look. But then I throw my throw blade going on top of that. So <laughs> there's places for that. Yes, ma'am. So if, you're, if, if I'm looking on Thumbtack, what am I searching for? A contractor that can do what? A, a, a carpenter type contractor who know, understands how to cut wood and angles. Okay, carpenter. And I, I recommend TaskRabbit as a source over a thumbtack. Okay. So let's talk about art. A lot of people do not know how to hang art properly. It's usually too high. Most art should be 
the middle of the art should be 57 inches from the bottom of the floor. Most art. There are exceptions like the large piece of art behind you. The double stacked art or collages will have that. If it's over a sofa, I do three to six inches over the sofa. And also you have to consider where that head, your head would rest. You don't want your head to rest on art if it were to, in that scenario. Ways you can incorporate art creatively. This is a mirror and a cutting board. You can stack it and prop it against the wall if you have space. Like this is a beautiful towel. This is in that mirror's house. And we don't want it. We're not going to hang art on tile like that, right? But you can stack it. You could, you could have had a bigger piece of art here with a little bit of color too. Uh, double mirrors is great art, double art. When I find a piece of art that I love and, I, and it, it works for my color scheme and I can't find another piece, maybe the wall's too big for just one piece, I'll get the same piece and I'll flip one upside down and that creates some beautiful balance and it, it's a way to keep those color the color scheme that you're looking for. The one on the far wall is in that house with a big pool. That's the dining room. Large art that you can space out. I like at least three to six inches between art like that because you want it to, to fill in the space, right? You want to make sure that your art is proportionate to the space. And then the one on the bottom, that design you don't even need art sometimes. So the thing about art is art should control the eye. You wanna put art where you want someone's eye to rest. You don't have to put art on every wall. I don't like to put art in hallways, maybe at the end of a hallway, but I like personal space in the hallways. That's from my staging background. <laughs> Something Jen and I were talking about last night and she mentioned this, a lot of people wait to the last minute to get their art and it's usually an afterthought. Your budget's out and you tend to buy smaller scale art. That's what she said. <laughs> so keep that in mind too. Art should be part of the design of the room. The first thing I do when I'm designing spaces, I think about the color palette. We'll talk about that in a minute color palette, then I think about the big pieces, which could be a bed, a sofa. So I'm getting the big pieces first because I want to make sure everything fits around that because those are essential things that you have to have. Then your, then your side tables, lamps, and they should all complement the color palette and the aesthetic, right? And then your art. Where are you going to put the art in the room? I often do not put art over beds because I want the bed to be a, the art. The throw pillows and the, the bed frame. In this example, you have the, lo the windows and it's supposed to be a peaceful, serene aesthetic. So you don't need anything to visually disrupt that, right? There can be visual clutter if it's not done right. And you don't want your space to feel overwhelmed. If you notice any of the pictures that I've been going through, they don't feel cluttered, hopefully, to you. They feel balanced, mm -hmm. and that's very important. So the beast within, what do you think we're gonna talk about? You're not allowed to say, because you already know. I don't, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> we're gonna talk about pet-friendly spaces. Because oh. <laughs> I know, since I've been working with Rachel, she preaches pet-friendly. But what does that mean? It's more than a water bowl. It's more than a leash, right? Is your MTR, STR, who here has MTRs or STRs that are not pet friendly? <laughs> okay, do you, mind, do you mind if I ask? Wait, wait, what's, hold, what's holding you back? Flooring? Okay. I just went with not preference. Just a personal preference. Yeah. Can we change that today? <laughs> my, that's my goal. That's why I'm asking the tough questions. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Because, you know, like some of my guests, my husband, have allergies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. Because, you know, if I hold pet friendly, then. Because I have friends that his kid is like very, you know, like pet 
Yeah. Right. You know, mm-hmm. What will help, and Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you mention that, that your place is a pet friendly, you allow cats and dogs or dogs, if that's just what you're doing, that also will communicate if you have allergies, this might not be the best listing for you. So you communicating that can eliminate that issue so it doesn't become a negative if guests book you. So you always want to eliminate the negatives, right? Yes, ma'am. We might be talking about that if, if I can, if I, and if, if I'm not answering it fully, Rachel will add to that as well. Any fears outside of like preferences? Yes, ma'am. So I, my, my name is arbitrage. Yes. So you might have limitation in arbitrage. Yeah, I mean, I can, they allow pets if I put like electricity or something, yeah. but it's the upstairs is all carpeted. So that's why I said no. Okay. Pets. Yeah, I understand that. So if you don't have control over the flooring, that could be an issue in in a rental arbitrage situation. You are limited. There are very pet friendly flooring. I love, you know, you can go to floor decor and you, we get scratch resistant because you never know how well groomed they are and moisture resistant, non-skid because you don't want the dog to like, you've never seen the dogs just like, they keep going when they try to stop. So remembering that too is, is good. So flooring can play a huge deal in, in turning some of those negatives around. There's flooring out there that's very pet friendly. So it's more than a fenced in yard and a leash. What will set you apart? Because it really will set you apart. And Rachel doesn't just ask or encourage this for no reason. It's for profitability for you because the amount of people that allow pets is limited and you become a yes very quickly especially in midterm rental if your house had a huge repair or maybe it burned down or there was a flood and you could not live in it for three to six months would you board your pet for three to six months it's not practical it's not fair to that family too who might need that pet in the healing process. Mm-hmm. It's very psychological. Mm-hmm. So it's a part of a solution. It's not just a way to make money. It's a way to add value to your guest. And remember, it's not about pretty. It's about money, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the fun stuff, the normal stuff people you know, do is leashes, dog bowls. This is a little container that has some dog toys in it. This is Karen's property and the dog bowl and the dog bowl matched the Smeg refrigerator perfectly. Crates, dog crates, you can get them, like if you limit the size dog to the property, buy the size dog crate for that dog and say this is the type of crate that we have because there's a lot of dogs that are crate trained and that's in your benefit too if they have a safe place to go and hang out and chill and not get into things, right? Functional stuff, protective furniture covers. You can buy them that will eliminate hair on your sofas and side chairs. If you have guests that are pet friendly, it's actually a relief for them to know that you have those things there because they don't want your furniture damaged either. They really don't want to be responsible for it. Ultimately, most of the time there are exceptions. But if you provide a solution for them, they're not expensive either. And they don't have to be perfect. They're there to protect, and so and they'll, they can come off and go in the wash, right? Pet-friendly vacuum to help with the hair all over the house and things like that. And they, they usually have a, a, a better suction. They usually have attachments that are gonna be more helpful in the pet-friendly. Old towels, you have those towels that you're replacing because someone washed their car with it. Who did that? (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) keep those towels. Use them for pet dry off. Use them for the pet to uh, clean up after the pet, for the guests to have something. You can have a crate like this full of old towels and dog towels right, right on the box. And you're creating a solution for that pet. Yes, ma'am. A 
a very dense fabric that doesn't have a lot of nooks and crannies, like a woven texture, a non-texture. There's texture, the hairs could get in there. If it's velvet's a really good fabric, believe it or not, because things usually can't get stuck in it, you can vacuum it very easily. A very dense fabric. Leather is a great. You can do vegan leather and you know traditional leather as well. Where did you get the protective pressure covers? Because that one is really cute. This one, they're on Amazon. And do you have vendors that have that? That's great. And I do I do love the flat sheet idea too. That's a great idea. You're right. And then there's air purifiers that will help you with the allergens in the air. Um, rabbit air is specifically for pet friendly environments. That is one vendor. There are other vendors out there, but this is a pet friendly air purifier. And then fabulous stuff. This means fabulous stuff is like, let's go the extra mile. We are pet lovers, owners, and we know exactly what is bougie and what is not bougie. We're going to make it the bougie and we're going to live it to the fullest. Hire a pet waste removal company. Who wants to go out there digging for oysters? <laughs> that was my nice words. <laughs> Nobody, but there's companies that do this and they also will add things to treat it to to kill off anything that could be toxic as well as like varmints that could be in the matter that they're removing and things like that. Dog bathing stations. You can have something really nice like this or you could just have an area maybe right near the garage with a nice hose or shower hookup or something like that that's easy to take the sand off a dog who might have just had fun at the beach, right? Or gone romping through some mud in a river. Dog walking services. Build relationships with companies in your areas, especially if you're in a metropolitan area, a downtown area where there might not be all the green spaces. There's services that can accommodate your guests and help them, especially if they're working professionals and they may be gone and you may allow pets there when their guests are not there. This allows the dog not to have issues when the owner's gone, right? Make relationships with dog grooming vendors as well. You never know. Also, a local vet. This is our local vet. We recommend this vet in case of, heaven forbid, something happened, but in case, here is a local source that we trust. That makes you look good. You're solving a problem for them. Doggy daycares, right? People on vacation, they may want to do something one day without their dog. It may not be feasible to leave it in the house all day. You may even have that rule. Dogs aren't allowed to stay at the house if no one's there. That's a solution that will solve that problem. And food delivery, Instacart. I put my little carrot there. You see it? Did we talk about Instacart yesterday? Everyone signed up for Instacart already? 
So you can you can have your guests, like what's your favorite dog treats? What's your dog food? You could have it delivered to the house for your guests. It's there waiting on them. It's one, and who wants to carry around bags of dog food on vacation? Solve that problem. It's a way for a stream of revenue, right? They're going to be buying the dog food anyway. Take care of it. Solve that problem. Baby, you've got this. What do you think we're going to talk about now? Ah, children friendly. <laughs> I think when it comes to MTRs, you definitely need to have the mindset of kid friendly with exceptions. Like if you have smaller spaces from like more nurse friendly and things like that. But these are some things that I have personally used and think of that are going to be children friendly. Obviously any kind of furniture and things that you would use for a pet are also kid friendly, right? <laughs> so we've talked about that already. Dinnerware. I always have extra types of play settings for the kids. And I usually put them on a lower level so the kids can participate in clean and setting the table and whatnot. It's in their reach. Sippy cups, cups that are younger child friendly are important. Entertainment games, a little tent, some puzzle type things are fun. Look at the books. I, I, I found these books. This is cardiology for children. There's pharmacy for children all aboard the RX Express. <laughs> There's all kinds of books, right? I just thought those were fun. I, Nina, I got Nina the a set of like, she loved it. She thought it was the coolest thing ever. So having, having these fun books, I mean, where, where were these books with my kids? I could have doctors right now. So. <laughs> in my family. <laughs> the bathroom, you have to think about the bathroom. Bathroom is a safety zone when it comes to kids, right? Having the handrails is good. It doesn't matter if it, what age. Children will slip just like an older person could slip. So having some handrails in the kitchen you, and bathroom, this, you can prop this up against the sink for brushing teeth or washing hands, right? It's mobile move it out of the way having these fun little hooded towels you know because the bigger towels aren't as efficient for a little person and these are fun and creative if you're at the beach you can have shark if you're at a mountain house you can have something else I don't know <laughs> a frog <laughs> there's frogs in the mountains see this furniture you want to make oh a rental companies for the big furniture pieces we recommend that as well so design is in the details. I'll be very fast. The design is in the details and you can see these pictures. You know, uh, I see a lot of short term rental, mid term rentals, they're under accessorized. You don't need a lot of accessories, but you definitely don't want to under accessorize because that creates character and a feeling of warmth and hominess. It's possible, but one thing, because I'm rushing, I forgot to say this, always check the liability on those and if there's any recalls on anything kid related. That's super important. And these are details too. Lighting is super important in the details, little accent pieces, fun pieces of furniture that have a little pop. Tips, durability is everything, huge. Risk management, always think about your liability. Protect yourself. Anything that touches the body is important. Sheets, pillows, towels, sofas, beds, mattresses. Those should be the quality things that you have in your property. Beds, heads, and bottoms. A lot of people talk about beds and heads, but I say beds, heads, and bottoms because you need to have the right ratio between bathrooms and bottom and people, <laughs> right? So if you have 10 people, how many bedrooms, bathrooms should you have? Three was ideal. I say four max per bathroom. That's really, I would prefer three, but four max for sure. We get what you pay for. Quality is important. Don't focus on pricing. If it's cheap, it's cheap for a reason, mm -hmm. typically. Aesthetics should complement architecture and your guest avatar. Color mapping, I provide coloring, color three colors, and they can be variations 
but that is throughout the whole house so there's continuity and it looks really good and professional photography is everything so these are some services I provide yes installation and I do it nationwide nationwide right now my team is at Sandy Mathis property Crystal River installing her property yeah we're installing yeah it's in Florida here yeah it's right down the it's about five hours south around the curve <laughs> this is my contact information if you if you scan this it automatically will pull up my all my contact information and if you could like me on Instagram I have two accounts my personal brand and my business brand and my books on Amazon I'm done Now go devour the competition!